Many scientific discoveries have come about as a result of luck or accident, and today we're going to be discussing one such discovery. A new research has shown that astronomers have discovered the largest radio galaxy ever that stretches at least 16 million light years through space. Just how big is this galaxy? And what are the implications of this size? Stick around to the end of the video as we explore all these and more. Alkyonefs is located 3.5 billion light years, 1.1 GPC, away from Earth, and it is a low excitation Class II Fanaroff Riley radio galaxy. A group of astronomers led by Martin Oey discovered it in low frequency array LOFAR, data, and it is located in the constellation Lynx. With lobed structures spanning 5 megaparsecs across, it has the largest extent of any radio galaxy identified, and is described by its discoverers as the largest known structure of galactic origin. For comparison, another similarly sized giant radio galaxy is 3C236, with lobes 15 million light years across. Alkyoniefs is a radio galaxy, but what does that mean? A radio galaxy is a galaxy that has enormous radio emission areas which extend well beyond the visible structure of the galaxy. Its active galactic nucleus's jets fuel these powerful radio lobes. They exhibit luminosities between 10 MHz and 100 GHz, between 10 MHz and 1039 watts at radio frequencies. The radio emission is due to synchrotron process, the interaction of twin jets with the external medium which is then altered by the effects of relativistic beaming produces the observable structure in radio emissions. Large elliptical galaxies make up the majority of the host galaxies. The ability to identify radio-loud active galaxies at great distances makes them useful tools for observational cosmology. A giant radio galaxy belongs to a unique class of objects distinguished by the existence of radio lobes produced by relativistic jets propelled by the central galaxy's supermassive black hole. Giant radio galaxies are different from regular radio galaxies in that they can grow to scales that are significantly larger than the diameters of their host galaxies, up to many megaparsecs across. The galaxy was named after the giant Alkyoniefs, of the son of Uranus, the Greek primordial god of the sky. The recently discovered object turns out to be the biggest GRG ever discovered. A paper describing the discovery was posted on the ARXIV preprint repository on February 11th. GRG are radio galaxies that are expected to be longer than 2.3 million light years overall. They are rare objects grown in low density environments. GRGs are crucial for astronomers to study the genesis and development of radio sources in general. 1,000 GRGs have so far been found, and only 10 of those are larger than 10 million light years. J1420-0545, and it has a proper length estimated to be over 16 million light years. Therefore, GRGs are considered to be the largest single galaxy induced phenomenon in the cosmos, together with the rest of the megaparsec scale radio galaxies. The new gigantic radio galaxy that was discovered by the astronomy team, led by Martin SSL Uy of Leiden University in the Netherlands, breaks all previous records and is now the largest GRG ever discovered. The finding was made by analyzing the second data release, DR2, from LOTSS. By subtracting angularity compact sources and imaging at 60-inch and 90-inch resolution, the researchers reprocessed the LOTSS DR2, the latest version of the LOFAR's Northern Sky Survey, at 144 MHz. The obtained images provided them with the opportunity to explore a new sensitivity zone for radio galaxy lobes and, therefore, constitute potential information for the hunt of undiscovered GRGs with huge angular lengths. The three-part radio structure that the astronomers discovered turned out to be a massive radio galaxy with two outer, lobe-like, and a central, jet-like component. They gave this GRG the name Alkyoniefs and found that it has a true proper length of 16.43 million light years and a projected proper length of roughly 16.26 million light years. As a result, it is the biggest structure that a single galaxy has ever produced. The image of the two plasma plumes is very special because we haven't seen a situation where a single galaxy has produced a structure this large before. 
The findings showed that some galaxies have an influence that extends well beyond the immediate surroundings. But exactly how far? It's challenging to determine that. Astronomers can only measure a portion of the radio galaxy's length, or a low estimate of its whole length, because astronomical images are acquired from a single point of view, and therefore, they lack depth. However, even that lower bound, which is more than 16 million light years, is enormous and comparable to 100 Milky Ways in a row. Yep, it is 100 times bigger than our galaxy. Alkyoneus has a total luminosity at 144 megahertz of approximately 80 YW slash hertz, which is typical for larger radio galaxies. The elliptical galaxy J081 42.68 plus 522410 .0, which has a star mass of roughly 240 billion solar masses and a supermassive black hole mass of about 400 million solar masses, was discovered to be the host of this GRG. When compared to other GRG hosts, the host of Alkyoneus has a relatively low stellar mass and supermassive black hole mass, according to the paper's authors. According to them, this shows that no strong positive link between radio galaxy length and instantaneous low-frequency radio power, star mass, or SMBH mass can exist within the GRG population. It was never likely that one of the largest galaxies in the universe would live close to Earth because Earth does not have a unique position in the universe. The radio giant is 3 billion light-years away from us, as it turns out. The fact that the giant looms as large in the sky as the moon, despite the incredible distance, suggests that the structure had to have a record-breaking length. The fact that the radio eyes of the LOFAR telescope only saw this giant just now is because the plumes are relatively faint. The scientists were suddenly able to identify the giant after reprocessing a collection of pre-existing photographs so that minor characteristics stood out. The plumes of Alkyoneus may provide details on the cosmic web's generally elusive filaments. The modern, mature cosmos is sometimes referred to as the cosmic web because it resembles a network of threads and nodes the astronomers refer to as filaments and clusters, respectively. Although the galaxies and filaments and clusters can be seen clearly on their own, finding the space between galaxies has, with a few notable exceptions, only been successful in clusters. Now the question is, could Alkyoneus change this? Alkyoneus, like the Milky Way, lives inside a filament. So when its plume travels across the medium, they feel a headwind. They leisurely dance with an invisible partner, which subtly changes the direction and shape of the plumes. Scientists have long hypothesized that the forms and pressures in radio galaxies' plumes may be related to filament characteristics, but they have never found a case where the correlation is as tenable as in Alkyoneus. The surrounding medium can rather easily mold Alkyoneus plumes since they are so large and rarefied. How did Alkyoneus become so large? For now, no one knows what gave Alkyoneus its record length. The first idea that sprang to the scientist's mind were an abnormally large black hole, a large stellar population, and a lot of stardust, or exceptionally strong jet streams. But that didn't lead them anywhere because, surprisingly, compared to its smaller sisters and brothers, Alkyoneus seems to be below average in all four of those areas. The researchers will now look into whether radio galaxy settings could instead account for the development of giants in the coming years. Another interesting find is the discovery of the first quadruple system ever seen. An asteroid that was discovered in the 19th century has now been identified as the first quadruple system ever detected. Astronomers have discovered that the 160-mile-wide space rock known as 130 Electra has three smaller sister moons. Although it is relatively common for asteroids to be accompanied by satellite bodies, and of the 1.1 million asteroids found, approximately 150 are known to have at least one moon. But it is not always easy to see them. In 1873, Electra was discovered for the first time in the asteroid belt between Jupiter and Mars. However, the first sign of its moon was not discovered until 130 years later, and the second was not discovered until 2014 at the earliest. Because asteroids are so small and poorly lighted, any smaller orbiting body will appear fainter and most likely be substantially outshone 
by its parent asteroid. Not only that, it becomes difficult to see the moon the closer it is to the asteroid, much like it is difficult to see exoplanets orbiting other stars. The finding was made by a group of astronomers from the National Astronomical Research Institute of Thailand led by Anthony Berdu. This new discovery demonstrates that specialized data processing and reduction algorithms that model the physics of the instruments can increase their contrast limits. The three moons of Electra have been given the names S-2003-130, S-2014-130, and S-2014-130. The first is 3.7 miles wide, 6 kilometers, and orbits Electra on average at a distance of about 807 miles, 1300 kilometers, whereas the second one is only 1.24 miles, 2 kilometers wide, and orbits Electra at a distance of 310 miles, 480 kilometers. The recently discovered moon is even closer and smaller with a diameter of 1 mile, 1.6 kilometers, and an average orbital distance of about 211 miles, 340 kilometers. The fact that the discovery made use of the same data set that helped scientists identify Electra's second moon made it all the more amazing. The astronomers made their findings using archived data from the SPHERE instrument mounted on the Very Large Telescope of the European Southern Observatory in Chile. They used a set of algorithms to predict and eliminate the extended glow surrounding the asteroid, known as a halo, as well as a newly created data reduction pipeline to remove noise from the raw data. Once this was completed, Electra's third moon emerged. So it was there all the while, we just couldn't find it. Now, they hope that their work may eventually help identify other faint and difficult to see asteroid moons. That's it for today. What do you think about these two exceptional discoveries? Let us know down in the comment section.